Good morning, friends. It's great to be with you this first Wednesday of September. I want to encourage you, grab your hot coffee, grab your hot tea. Let's dive into God's Word as we finish up the book of 2 Corinthians and the Apostle Paul shares with us about strength and healing for our souls. So as we're diving in this morning, I want to encourage you, if you just found us on Facebook, please like and follow us. That way you'll get all the alerts when we go live every Monday through Thursday on Biblecast, as well as our weekend services and special services we have, including tonight, which is First Wednesday. So I want to remind everybody it is the First Wednesday. So at all of our campuses, as well as live online, 7 p.m. Central tonight, we have our uh, first Wednesday services, which is prayer and prophetic, just pressing in the Holy Spirit. Great opportunity to just worship and, uh, and get energized by everything that God has for us. Also, I want to remind you, if you're with us and you have a prayer request, you can type those into the comments section. I see uh, Hilda is on this morning as well as many others that are saying their good mornings this morning. So thank you guys for making comments. If you have a prayer request, type it in there. And if you see somebody that's uh, sending a prayer request, please reply to that. Make sure that we're praying for them. And also, if you're with us on any of the other platforms, you can always email your prayer request to biblecast at tfc.org. All right, as I was saying, we're going to finish up and kind of press through and finish up 2 Corinthians here. Paul is going to begin a section today, continuing right where we left off yesterday, of addressing the issues. You know, he said, my strength is sufficient, or God's strength is sufficient. His grace is sufficient for me and my weakness. In other words, I get my strength from the Lord. He's going to kind of pick up on that theme and continue on. So here we go. He says, be that as it may, I haven't been a burden to you at all. Yet you say of me, he is a scoundrel and a trickster. All right, again, that's in quotes. And he's dealing with those super apostles, those folks that were trying to stir up dissension there and what they were saying about Paul. But he continues and says, But let me ask you this. Did I somehow cheat or trick you through any of the men I sent your way? I was the one who insisted that Titus and, your brother, and our brother come and help you. Now again, we know that Titus came. Titus is beloved by the Corinthian churches. It's probably a good source of information for Paul as well because Titus was able to travel a little more freely, was able to go and minister to the church in Corinth there, and, uh, and was able to communicate with them. We actually don't know who the other brother is. Uh, we uh, have lots of speculation, but the fact is we just don't know. Paul says, did Titus take advantage of you? Didn't we all come to you in the same spirit, following in the ways of integrity? I hope that you don't assume that all this time we have simply been justifying ourselves in your eyes. Beloved ones, we have been speaking to you in the sight of God as those joined to Christ and everything we do is meant to build you up and make you stronger in your faith. So Paul is saying, look, he's taking that fatherly tone with them again. And he's saying, look, everything that we've done. My heart has been in the, in the sight of God, in the eyes of God. Everything I have done has been to build you up, to encourage you and strengthen you in your faith. You know, I think sometimes we get so used to um, what I might call easy, casual encouragement that it's hard when a coach really tells us what we really need to do. And somebody comes in and gives us that hard truth. Can I just tell you, friends, we're not going to grow and develop and mature unless the Lord can speak hard truth to us. And also, if we can't hear it through others, sometimes even others who are not well-intentioned. I mean, we can sometimes receive hard truth from those who are ill-intentioned. But we just need to be sensitive to Holy Spirit and, quite frankly, not so easily offended. He says, Now I'm afraid that when I come to you, I may find you different than I desire you to be. And you may find me different than you would desire for me to be. All right, this is just a thing. Did your mom ever say, hey, when your dad comes home, you're going to really get it? That's what Paul's saying. <laughs> He's saying, look, that's not who I want to be. I want you to, I, I want to be uh, your loving father. I don't want to be the one that has to come in and bring correction. So let's, let's all get our attitudes in the right spot. He says, I don't want to find you in disunity with jealousy and angry outbursts with selfish ambition, slander, gossip, arrogance, and turmoil. I'm actually afraid that on my next visit, my God will humble me in front of you as I shed tears over those who keep sinning without repenting of their impurity, sexual immorality, and perversion. Paul's saying, look, church, we've got to be getting ourselves cleaned up. We've got to be those who are holy. And when we say holy, that doesn't mean better than somebody else. It simply means set apart for the purposes of God. <clears throat> which means there are things that we're not going to do. We've got to stop sinning without repenting. What does repenting mean? We turn away from those things, those things that died when we accepted Jesus, those things that are leading us away from God's best, 
the sexual immorality, pure impurity and perversion, you know, all the things that we see rampant in our culture today. Turn away from those things. Be something that is set apart for God. He said, this will be my third trip to you, and I will make sure that by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every matter will be confirmed. Since you are demanding proof that the Anointed One is speaking through me, I will give you proof by exercising discipline among you. For just as I told you the last time I was there, and now though absent, I say it again, that when I come, I will not go easy on those whom I've already warned and those who continue to persist in their sin. Now, you can get a sense of what's going on here. There are those who are kind of caught up in their sinful lifestyle. They want, they want the best of what they would consider both worlds. They want to have all the benefits of being a Christian. They want to have eternity. They want to have the empowering grace. But they also want to be able to live their life any way they want. And Paul's saying, look, that's not how we, get, that's not how we live. That's not what God is calling us to do. <clears throat> He's saying, look, when I come to you, I'm not going to go easy on them. You need to know. I'm giving you the heads up that we can't embrace that. And we see that it was probably that kind of faction of the church that is the ones with Paul, you know, trying to stir up all this uh, trouble and turmoil against Paul. That way they can get continuing to live in their negative lifestyle. It says, Christ is not weak or feeble in his dealings with you, but mighty and powerful within you. For although he was crucified as a weakling, that's in quotes, now he lives robed with God's power. And we also are, again in quotes, weak ones in our co-crucifixion with him. But now we live in God's triumphant power together with him, which is demonstrated on your behalf. Now your souls will be strengthened and healed if you hold steadfast to your faith. Haven't you already experienced Jesus Christ Himself living in you? Now this is a great thing as Paul's finishing up here saying, now your souls will be strengthened and healed. What's our soul? That's our mind, our will, and our emotions. He's saying, look, use your mind to make a different choice. Let your emotions come into alignment with the things of God. Be strengthened and be healed from your past wounds, the things that have, are holding you back. Be healed from those things so that you can move forward. Then don't you have Christ living in you? Let Him do that work in you. Let Jesus, let Holy Spirit do that work inside of you. He says, if not, you are deficient. I hope you understand that we cannot be devalued. But we pray to God that you will be flawless, not to validate our ministry among you, but so that you may continue on the path of righteousness, on the right path, even if we are denigrated. For in reality, the power we have is used in support of the truth, not against it. And we claim before God that you will be fully equipped and mature, for it brings us great joy when you are strong, even if we seem weak and denigrated. I'm writing my honest feelings to you from afar, so that when I arrive, I won't have to correct you by using the authority the Lord has given me. For I want to build you up and not tear you down. And so you see, Paul's like, look, I want to build you up. I want to see you do well, but we got to do what's right. We got to get on the right path. We got to stop just sinning and living our life however we want. Let's press on towards what God has. Let's empower or, or, or grab a hold of the power of Jesus within us so that we can live the life that God has for us. He says, finally, beloved friends, be cheerful. Repair whatever is broken among you as your hearts are being knit together in perfect unity. Live continually in peace and God the source of love and peace will mingle with you. Greet and embrace one another with the sacred kiss of all God's holy people. Send their greetings. Now, may the, Lord, may the grace and joyous favor of the Lord Jesus Christ, the unambiguous love of God, and the precious communion that we share in the Holy Spirit <clears throat> be yours continually. Well, we see this and we see this incredible uh, letter that Paul has written, and it encourages us to make sure that we are on the right path, that we are going the right direction. So Holy Spirit, come. I pray that you would come and fill each one of us. Give us your empowerment. Give us your grace. Let us be those who are empowered by you to live the life that you would want us to live. And Father, I ask that you would come and have us repent. Holy Spirit, just give us that power to turn away from any of the things that are holding us back from living in the perfect righteousness you have. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you guys. We love y'all. Have an amazing day. God bless.